exponential function is a function that can be written in the form y equals a times b to the x power. a could not be 0, um, and b has to be greater than 0, but it can't be 1. And x is all real numbers. Now, we're going to look at two different types of exponential functions. The first exponential function we're going to look at is an exponential growth function. And we are going to write the exponential function that corresponds with this table and also the graph that I gave you displayed below it. So the first thing we need to do with this table is look at the change in x and the change in y. To get from one x value to the next x value, we're just adding 1. Now for the change in y, to get from 0.5 to 2, we'd have to add 1.5. To get from 2 to 8, we'd have to add 6. And to get from 8 to 32, we'd have to add 24. So just doing that, we see that there's no constant rate of change. So this is obviously not a linear function. So that means we need to explore the option of it being an exponential function. So to find how we get from one y value to the next, I'm going to divide the second y value by the first y value. So 2 divided by 0 0.5, and I get 4. Now what happens if I do that with the next two y values? 8 divided by 2 equals 4. And if I do that with the last two y values, 32 divided by 8 equals 4. So because I got the same value every time I divided the consecutive pairs of y values, I got the same number, I know that that is my value for b. So b in this case is 4, and that's my common ratio. And since I just confirmed that there's a common ratio, I know for a fact that the table that I'm looking at is a table for an exponential function. Now I need to find the value for a. So a is our initial value. It's our y-intercept. So when I look at the table, wherever I see that x equals 0, then that y value is my value for a. So in this case, a is 0.5, or 1 half. Now in order to write the function that represents this table, all I need to do is substitute my value for a, my initial value, and my common ratio, my value for b, into the form for exponential functions. So I'm going to write y equals the value for a, which is 0 0.5, multiply that by 4 to the x power, and that's my function. Now if you type this function into a graphing calculator or any graphing program, you would see that the table and the graph correspond to this function that is on the bottom of the worksheet. This next example, I'm already giving it away that it's an exponential decay function. Um, so we're going to do exactly what we did with the exponential growth function in example one. And then we'll talk about how these are similar and how they're different um, when we finish writing the function. So first, we're going to find the change in x values. So these are all increasing by 1. So we can look at the change in y values and find our common ratio. So we're always going to take the second consecutive y value and divide it by the first consecutive y value. So it's tempting to want to divide the larger number by the smaller number. You have to make sure you divide the second consecutive one by the first consecutive number. So 4 divided by 8 is 1 half. 2 divided by 4 is 1 half as well. And 1 divided by 2 is 1 half. So our common ratio is 1 half. Now we need to identify the initial value. So on my table, I want to find where x equals 0 because that y value is going to be what I write down for a. So a equals 2 in this case because x is 0, y is 2, so a is 2. And then to substitute those values in for a and for b in the exponential function form, 
we get y equals 2 times 1 half to the x power. And if we look below the function and below the table, we see we have a graph of this function on the worksheet. The points correspond, and we can visually see that this is an exponential decay function. So it's really important to be able to tell the difference between an exponential growth function and an exponential decay function. When we write them, they're both written in almost exactly the same way. They have an initial value, which is a, they have a common ratio, which is b, and then the exponent on the common ratio is our variable x. Now the difference between an exponential growth function and an exponential decay function is that when the x values are increasing, the y values are also increasing for exponential growth. But if the x values are increasing and the y values are decreasing, it's exponential decay. And we can say that because we've identified from the table that there's a common ratio between the y values. We can also see that in our functions that we wrote for these, for the exponential growth function, that common ratio, b, is a whole number and it's greater than one. But in our exponential decay function, we see that b is a fraction. It's between zero and one, which means that we can look at this function and we can tell that it's exponential decay. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.